the update and we've got Gina and Kevin today and an apology from Les uh, from the Selwyn Waihora Zone Committee and I just thought if there's any um, burning questions from that report which you've got in your hub we can take a note of them and forward them through and get a response that way. Um, on, so welcome, so who have we got first if you'd like to kick away um, and I'll just pull it up. So, Kevin, would you like to go first? Or? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's up to you guys. You sort it out. Yep, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Great. Welcome. Good. Nice to thanks. See you. Thanks very much. Tenako to everybody. Um, you've all got copies of the report, so I'd just like to add a, and highlight a few things. The committee's been fairly busy during the previous four months at a couple of workshops putting together and fleshing out the prioritised action plan that we've got for the next three years. This is seen as a working document for the Zone Committee. Um, not all actions are planned for the first year and it is seen as a living document that can be altered as circumstances change. But in general, the uh, top priority action is community engagement and uh, that's what we're putting uh, an emphasis on. This year, the committee didn't have a budget for biodiversity projects as we had previously, but instead we had a 50k budget to help to implement the action plan, and this has to be tied to the uh, various actions that we have published. A budget is therefore being prepared, and that is tied to the actions that are proposed for the next year, which is ending in June, so we have to uh, spend that money before June, which actually might be more difficult than we think. Um, on to what we've been doing. Uh, in community engagement, we recently held a hui with representatives of the main community groups in Christchurch connected with the Christchurch catchments, and the two councils as well, to try and firm up how the Zone Committee could best help these community groups achieve their aims. This was a very worthwhile meeting and a number of helpful roles were seen for the Zone Committee and a key role was seen to collaborate with the Community Waterways Partnership to implement its charter and the Zone Committee's action plan together. So that was a key thing. There was a number of, uh, we did a complete SWOT analysis and there was a whole pile of actions came out of that. Um, it looks like to highlight at our August meeting we had a deputation from the Avon Heathcote Estuary Trust they were very worried about the proposed 360 trail that was being proposed to go through the middle of the bird sanctuary in the estuary. A representative from the 360 trail also presented, as the opposition if you like, presented to the committee who maintained that the trail wouldn't disturb the birds in the sanctuary. Um, it was found out that the trail is supposed to be dog friendly and there was a lot of discussion about whether a trail complete with possible dogs could be compatible with the bird sanctuary, given how important the bird sanctuary is. Um, there's nobody on the zone committee that has expertise in this area, but and I realise this has been on the council's radar for quite a while, but the zone committee really urges the council to carefully consider the ramifications of this decision. Um, one of the actions that we've got in our... Uh, action plan for the Zone Committee is to advocate for continuing updates to the mathematical model for the groundwater system in Christchurch City. The modelling done by ECAN was three to four years ago suggested that there was a flow of groundwater from Waimakariri District under the Waimakariri River and into the Christchurch aquifers. This ultimately led, as you will realise, to Plan Change 7, which has just been notified by ECAN and places restrictions on nitrate levels in the Waimakariri district. The mathematical model is the only tool that you have for um, uh, predicting the long-term future of Christchurch's drinking water supply. The model relies on a set of data for things like average steam fl uh, stream flows, water levels in wells, rainfall, amount of irrigation, and things like that. As I understand it, the current model uses all of the available data, but could always be improved as more data becomes available. Uh, this model, mathematical, currently uh, resides in ECAN, mm -hmm. and I would urge the council to keep a watching brief and to encourage ECAN to collect and invest in more data collection to improve and update the model. This is the only way that you can predict what's going to happen with your uh, groundwater aquifers as 
you withdraw from deeper and deeper aquifers, possibly, or whatever you do. It's 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 a very um, important tool for you. Finally, this will be my last report to the council. My six-year period on the zone committee finishes at Christmas. I'd like to thank the council for supporting the zone committee, both financially and in every other way, and always giving us a sympathetic hearing here. Thanks very much. Oh, thank you, Kevin, and that's sad news. You've been a fabulous chair there, so um, you'll thank be you. missed. Thank you for all your work. Can I just ask you a question about the um, the groundwater modelling? So, how often at the moment is it being updated? Do you know? Um, it's not. Aha. Uh -huh. um, uh, they did the model and called it quits at that stage. I, I've actually spoken to the modellers at ECAN. I also went and spoke with Becca, who do modelling for you as well, and spoken with Aqualink. Aqualink. And um, the non-ECAN people said that more data would certainly be helpful. So it's, not... it's a particular kind of model. Um, it's called a stochastic model, which means that uh, you put in values and then you run it varying everything. That, and they did maybe two and a half, three thousand runs. And then the, they figured out the probability of uh, various things happening, like water coming under the Waimakariri. So it's, um, it, it definitely, the more data you put in, the better the model gets. So is the data being collected? No, no, there's, there's no further data being collected. But it's... It, uh, it is not a necessarily an easy thing because you might need like deeper wells in some of the Waimakariri district, yeah. things like that. So when was the modelling done? Uh, I think it was about three years ago. So we could put a note at the end of this to, to write to ECAN and suggest that on the back of the report? I'll, I'll also be presenting to the ECAN Council and I'll also be mentioning it to them. Yes, yep. that's a good idea. Yep. I know okay. it's, a, it's a complicated piece of work, but it's really, really important. That it's extremely it. complex, yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions for Kevin? Aaron? Yeah, just, just around that modelling, because I thought that when we got an update on it last time, so a few years ago, they used the term could not is when with water coming under the WIMAC. So, because the public now, there's members of the public that say that it is and that it does have nitrates and there's nitrates. So it goes from one step to the other to the other, whereas it might have been modelling that said that it could happen or would possibly happen or probably. So can you clarify that? Well, the thing is that stochastic modelling, it's a probability. So right. there is a, a, a probability. So it can happen. It's not 100% probability. So at this point, water isn't coming under the WIMAC into uh, our aquifers? Yeah. Or, the, or it could I'm, be. I'm not the right person to talk yeah. to. Um, you need to talk to the modellers, but they are fairly uh, certain that there is. And in order to prove that, they actually went ahead and spent $3 million drilling three sets of three wells. Yeah. And uh, they pretty much confirmed that there was a vertical flow downwards. They, they drilled wells at 50, 100, and 150 metres deep and cased them. Yep. And the water height in each was, as they got deeper, the water level got less, which means that the water is actually flowing down. So um, so it's not modelling, it's factual then? Well, that, that was after they'd done the modelling, they uh, drilled these wells to try and prove it, basically. And, and the, the wells confirmed their suspicions, if you like. But it's never 100% with the stochastic model. Right. Well, that's really helpful to us. Mm. We're just putting a, um, another addition to the resolution there. You might be able to help us with the wording, Kevin. With the what, sorry? The wording here, encouraging oh. them to continually update data for the groundwater modelling. <laughs> Yep. Actually, um, it's actually in the groundwater modelling itself, isn't it? Yeah, it, and, and yeah, not not actually. They've the data that they have. I don't know. It, I don't know how good it is, but so just take as well as the data they can use with more. They can use more data, like deep well data and some. So continually update the data and the groundwater modelling. Yes, that'd be that'd be correct. Yeah.
And, yeah. It's probably, you know, every five years, something like that, it needs mm-hmm. needs to be updated. That's arguable because if it's three years old already, uh, you know, there'll be another two before we get another model and, yep. you know, time's marching on, isn't it? We'll see what they come up with anyway. Right. Um, are there any more questions for Kevin? Yanni. Um, thank you for the work that you've done. I really appreciate it. Um, I was just interested if you'd, um, if the zone committees had provided feedback or seen the recommendations around the stormwater management plans that are going to council tomorrow. Yes, so we have. We any, provided some. Any views on, um, on on them? For yes, we we put in a submission right. originally. Yeah, I don't have it with me. But right. Yeah, but there has been some. Submission go in. Was it? There, you know there was two two stormwater plans, weren't there? there yeah, a power hefka. Are you talking about the second one? Um, both of them, but I guess I was just interested in any high level concerns <laughs> that you had. Um, we're very concerned about the stormwater. Um, we part of the action plan is to figure out how we can get um, kind of a change in people's attitudes towards stormwater, and and that. We figured that has to come from a higher level. That has to come from government. Right. So things like zinc um, uh, and uh, um, copper. copper and and uh, every all of those things. And um, we we spend a lot of time also with sediment on the port hills. So it it needs a culture change, and it has to come. I mean, for instance, zinc. You just have to um, make uh, zinc roofs, uh, ordinary galvanised roofs, not allowable, right. and have colour steel instead, things like that. So it, it, it has to come from building consents, which I guess you have some control over, but it's probably more a coming from central government. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. thanks. All right. Thanks, Kevin. So, Gina, yeah. would you like to present your report? Oh, thank you. Um, the Banks Peninsula Zone Committee's focus in recent months has been our action plan, action plan budget, and uh, settling in our new committee members. As mentioned in our last report in July, we've finalised our action plan, and our focus has moved on how we can achieve those actions. Uh, zone Committee members have each volunteered to take a lead or supporting roles for our key actions, and our meet- meeting topics have focused on um, things that can d- directly contribute to achieving those. The action plan budget, which replaces the immediate steps fund, has also been a focus as we work through how best to allocate the $50,000 available this year. The budget provides a lot more flexibility with few constraints when compared to the IMS fund, and we have utilised that by recommending that a small amount of money go towards uh, some time for a wastewater expert in the Wainui community, um, just for a day to give community members a chance to ask questions and get information, uh, which will hopefully result in residents deciding to get their uh, systems inspected or upgraded. Uh, We've also put a small amount towards uh, climate change communication, and we'll we'll also be looking at how we can work with Christchurch, West Melton, and so on uh, zone committees to uh, potentially pull some funds when we're working on engagement and communication projects uh, that align with those zones. Um, The remainder of the budget will largely go towards the more typical on-the-ground projects. Um, We do have some concerns regarding that budget and have been discussing how we can ensure that it's fairly allocated, um, given that it's no longer a contestable fund. So on Banks Peninsula, most of our funding typically goes to small fencing and covenanting projects on private land. And we as a committee need to make sure that those land is landowners still have an opportunity to make us aware of projects that they want to do. Um, We don't want to end up in a situation where funding goes to projects and community groups that zone committee members happen to know without there being a transparent, objective or fair process um, behind it. Um, In addition to the action plan budget, uh, work is also being done through the CCC and ECAN work programs and the Zone Committee are pleased that these programs continue to focus staff time on resources in the Wairewa catchment, as well as the three priority catchments that the committee identified in Wainui, Goffs and Faraki. 
we're hopeful that this will continue and will result in more work being done in those catchments that leads to ki uta ki tai solutions from the mountains to the sea. In Wairiwa, the zone committee has written a letter of support to encourage the river rating district and flood management work to continue and also that um, recommended that bank stabilisation work and biodiversity objectives be incorporated um, so that the health of the river's streams and uh, Te Roto or Wairiwa can improve. Uh, the committee sees this work in Wairiwa as very important. Mm. And I think at the moment it's a little bit um, uncertain as to the commitment of ECAN's resources continuing to go towards that, but um, yeah, time will tell. <laughs> um, at our November meeting, committee, the committee had the opportunity to provide feedback to CCC on the proposed community engagement for the stormwater management plan. Um, this did spark a discussion afterwards on how councils might engage in these types of consultations as the stormwater management plan has quite a tight scope and it, given that it only covers um, developed areas and focuses on the piped network, uh, committee members felt that this type of narrowed down discussion is not that helpful to the general members of the public um, and that if effort is going into engaging with the community that it should ideally be done in a more integrated way um, so that feedback can be sought on a broader topic. Um, for example, consultation for related plans such as the Strategic Surface Water Implementation Plan and ECAN's integrated planning framework could be aligned um, so that it could be done through one round of consultation. Um, we acknowledge that that would be probably quite difficult to do, um, but in general feel that it would be better if consultation were at least planned from the public's point of view. Uh, with regards to water quantity, the committee would like to get the word out that there won't be enough water for all the uses that people want, uh, particularly on Banks Peninsula where waterways are small and there often aren't alternative sources available. Initial investigation suggests that current uh, rules are not fit for purpose on the peninsula for ta permitted takes and changes that are likely through Te Mana or Te Wai will see less water available for people and stock as the environment is prioritised. So the committee strongly encourages council to prepare for future water issues given the amount impact of climate change and the changing freshwater regulations, uh, particularly ensuring that new developments don't create long-term legacy issues. I'd also just quickly like to cover the um, native afor afforestation through the emissions trading scheme. Uh, the zone committee developed a case study in Little River, which was recently presented to ECAN councillors. That case study showed how difficult it is to um, make native afforestation financially viable um, under the ETS, especially when compared to planting exotic trees or continuing to um, farm marginal farmland. So if we want to see more natives on the peninsula, it would help uh, to lo lobby central government for changes to the ETS um, so that that's uh, more easily possible. And lastly, I'd just like to mention our new committee members, uh, Trudy Bishop, George Howden and Eliza Knight. And I was also uh, reappointed for a second three-year term. And I'd also like to mention the input that we've received from Tori Peden, uh, the chair of the Banks Peninsula Community Board. Um, who is now an alternate for Deputy Mayor Andrew Turner. Mm -hmm. And we're very pleased that alternates have been allowed and have benefited from Tory's input, um, particularly as working more closely with the community board is, has been a goal of ours um, as well. So, thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Any questions for Gina? Right. So um, a good report, and I think having this, um, we can refer to your suggestions in your um, report here, particularly in your um, advocating to local, regional, central government for statutory, non-statutory improvements. There's got some really good ideas in there that we can refer to as we go on. Sarah. Um, thank you both so much. Um, quick question, you both mentioned the, um, the $50,000 that you've got for the implementation funding, where the immediate steps was, um, I get twice that. And I'm just wondering if, uh, 
if you were able to do more with more funding, I, mean, I think you mentioned that you would struggle maybe to, 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 to do it this time, um, but that same, you know, having the funding when there's so much work to do, was it, was it because the work's quite different or just because there's funding constraints at the moment? Do you know? Um, um, no, not really. So the 50,000 is just for the first year and next year that'll be 75 and then the, I think the following year it goes back up to 100. Okay, so you can plan ahead for, yeah. for, for future greater spending. Oh, that's great. So I, th I think the change was just because with, with the disbanding of the old fund, um, there's just a period of adjustment. Basically. Yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. different types of things that you're doing. That's great, yeah. thanks. That's great. Oh, well, thank you. So we won't see you again, Kevin. Is this your last one? No, probably not. Right. I now live in Selwyn, so it doesn't seem fair to be representing the Christchurch West Melbourne Zone Committee. But we do have to um, recognise the incredible work that the Zone Committees are doing. There's quite a large time commitment, and I think it's really heartening that there's always so many people put their name forward to go on these committees. So it's, it's challenging, but it's really enjoyable work, and particularly now that it's about collaborating and reaching out to the community and bringing everyone together. It's, mm. it's quite rewarding, isn't it? it but is. Thank you again very much. It's been a good time. Yeah, good. <laughs> so I'd like to move that we receive the report and we have that additional recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Sarah, any discussion? <coughs> oh, that'd be lovely, yes. No, thank you. A note of thanks. Recognising Kevin Brown's excellent service to the city by the Zone Committee. That's great. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. That's minuted for time and memorial. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Opposed? That's carried. Thank you.